Okay, so the Nintendo Direct just wrapped up. It was yeah, about 40 minutes long, and there were some pretty big announcements in there that were at least exciting to see, and a couple of them were actually pretty shocking based on the, the visuals and all these different things. And tomorrow, I'll go over everything here line by line in Newswave, so tune in if you want like an entire recap of what happened. Right, right now, I wanted to go over some of my, my thoughts on the presentation itself, as well as a couple of big highlights. So if you guys enjoy the video, make sure to hit the like button and subscribe if you're new here to the Spawn Wave channel. So they did start with Pokemon, Scarlet and Violet, the Hidden Treasures of Area Zero DLC. This was particularly interesting because we don't usually expect to see Pokemon stuff in a general Nintendo Direct, as the Pokemon company would save that for their own Direct, maybe the following month or something, basically separate it from the general Direct. And the fact that we had this and Detective Pikachu in in this presentation makes me think that they're not going to have a Pokemon Presents in a month or two. I, I, I think they're good for now. Like, they outlined the different bits of downloadable content, the Teal Mask and the Indigo Disc, and they'll probably just put out some more information through Twitter or something as we get closer to release, which is fall 2023 for Teal Mask and winter 2023, or just winter, for the Indigo Disc. As for Detective Pikachu, that's out October 6th. 2023 so there's a good bit of stuff for pokemon fans to look forward to there but i did want to immediately jump to what was one of the big highlights for myself and i'm sure most people who are watching this especially if you remember the the days back with the super nintendo and that's super mario rpg it's full-on remake and when when we had heard about this it was between this and chrono trigger or something and i i'd go either way but I would have been more curious to see how they would have handled that art style for Super Mario RPG, and I think they did a pretty good job here. It was very unique at that time, and now we have, I guess, a lot of uh, different ways that they can present some of these older 16 or 32-bit games with HD2D or trying to fit sprites on the 3D backgrounds and stuff, but this looks like they were still trying to keep kind of that claymation look intact. And I think it looks great, the art style and everything. It looks like a one-to-one -one remake, too, even down to some of the animations where instead of, I, I don't know, something a bit uh, a bit more uh, detailed happens, you just they just spin around in a circle. Uh, but that's kind of going back to the charm of that 16-bit era where there was a lot of imagination involved at times. But this game's coming out November 17th, so I'm picking this game up day one as soon as it releases, grabbing a physical copy of it, absolutely, and... It being out in five months, I do like that we see that from Nintendo quite often, actually. When they announce a game, hey, it's out in four or five months, so you have a, a pretty much a clear shot right to it. So, exciting stuff. But then, they did this thing where it like went turbo mode for a bunch of their first-party titles. Like, there's a Princess Peach game coming that they were pretty vague about some of the details for it. It looks like she can transform when she steps on certain panels in the game. It's coming out next year in 2024. And then they immediately jump to Luigi's Mansion Dark Moon for Switch. That being from the 3DS is coming to the platform. So I guess they're, they just need to get the, the first Luigi's Mansion. Because I remember they took that and they moved it to the 3DS, which was a kind of a strange thing. So... I don't know, maybe they'll go back and do that as well, just to have the in, the entirety of the, the trilogy for Luigi's Mansion uh, on the one-on-one -on -one platform. Batman Arkham Trilogy. This this one was... Is, we've heard about this before through rumors and, and everything, and the title here that I'm most interested in seeing on the Switch is Night, clearly, because Asylum and City, those Xbox 360, PS3 games, they should run fine on the Switch. Night was a game that had some interesting issues, we'll say, at launch, specifically on PC, but it is a game that definitely beats up the the PS4 base and the Xbox One systems, so that that's going to be a fun one to see portable on the Switch and how that system handles it. It has all the DLC, and it's fall 2023. Uh, I mean, just a really good trilogy of titles. If you've never played them, I fully recommend checking that out. And then I wanted to jump down to Metal Gear Solid Master Collection. We already knew about this, but we didn't necessarily have confirmation that it was going to the Switch. And they went into some pretty serious detail here. Metal Gear Solid 1, 2, and 3, which it's a big deal for Metal Gear Solid 1 because from what I remember, it's only ever been on PlayStation. I feel like this is the first time it's gone to another platform 
even like the HD collection didn't have Metal Gear Solid 1 in it, but this has 1, 2, 3, uh, Metal Gear, Metal Gear 2 from the MSX, and the NES versions included, so there's a lot going on here with just Volume 1. On top of that, graphic novels are included, all digital, of course, strategy guides for all the different games, and this collection is out October 24th. I need a physical copy of this Konami for the Switch, uh, again, grabbing that immediately, uh, awesome, awesome collection of titles there. Oh, and Vampire Survivors, I think this is worth pointing out as well. Four-player local co-op, incredibly popular on PC and on Xbox. That going to the Switch August 17th, a really good pickup there for him. Then uh, scrolling down, this was another title that I'm putting basically right next to Super Mario RPG for how excited I was to see it. And that's Star Ocean, the second story R. It is, again, a full remake. And this was another one where the visuals were going to be in question because this was a time where we were still kind of in the in-between period of 2D to 3D and Star Ocean Second Story certainly kind of straddled that line where they didn't want to go fully 3D with everything yet and that's probably for the best because early 3D didn't look great <laughs> so they kind of played into that here where the backgrounds are like full 3D as you'd expect but then the character models are still kind of sprites. It looks almost HD 2D. And this is from Square, so that's probably what that aspect is. It's not quite on the level of what you see with Octopath Traveler 2 or Live Alive being some of the, the newer HD 2D games. Because the backgrounds here look, I guess, cleaner, quote unquote, or just more modern in terms of the 3D style. But the HD 2D sprites look really cool on that backdrop. So I'm I'm pretty excited for this one. It's out November 2nd once again. We have a game introduced to us, and it's out here pretty soon. And I, I guess First Departure R, which was more of just a straight remaster, did good enough for Square to say, hey, yeah, let, let's, let's do more of a, a remake for Second Story. But I will also admit, Second Story, I think, is the best one in the entire Star Ocean franchise. So it kind of makes sense that they would go all in on something like this. Also, the battles looked much more fluid than they did on the PS1. So maybe they did some revamping to that battle system as well. And then their big closeout was Super Mario Bro uh, Brothers Wonder. And we heard that there'd be a new 2D Mario game. It makes a lot of sense, I, I feel like, to follow up that Mario movie where the, the brand recognition for Mario is higher than ever. Introduce a game that, yes, is family-friendly, but also is more approachable as a 2D title as opposed to being like 3D, right? There's just, there's a lot going on there for uh, people who maybe don't play a lot of video games. So to see 2D and you can have, you know, four people playing on the same screen. I, I noticed that Mario can rail grind now. That was like immediately, I was like, oh, okay. He's, he's just grinding along a rail there. Then he can also grab onto him with his hands, do the same thing uh, from the, I guess the ceiling or above. The art style is, it was kind of odd looking at first. And I guess it kind of still is it. It has this, like, the characters look very, very smooth, and they're trying to separate them from the background. It, it kind of gives off that, yeah, that 2.5D sort of look, but they don't seem to take advantage of it where they swing the camera around or anything. So it's, uh, well, I, I got to see how that actually looks on uh, my TV here as opposed to through a stream. The wonder flowers that you run into in the world will do some very random and wacky things as they were showcasing. You have Toad, Daisy, Peach. They're all playable. You collect wonder seeds as you go through. Yoshi is in it, as you saw Mario kind of riding around on Yoshi. It's very colorful. Still looks like traditional 2D Mario, though. I'm, I, I guess the wonder flower is supposed to be the twist on this one because we even saw Mario turn into an elephant. So... Sounds like there are just going to be some very weird things happening in this game as you go through each level. October 20th, once again, a game, this one out in four months. As for the Direct itself, I thought it moved along pretty well. There was there were still some spots where I was like, okay, this is going on a little too long. I'm not the biggest Pikmin fan, so maybe that would have hit a lot better with like legitimate Pikmin fans who are really looking forward to Pikmin 4, which I will say looks pretty good. It looks like it's... Probably Nintendo's best shot at Unreal Engine, just based on the, the source material here, where it's supposed to look a little more realistic than what we see with normal Nintendo games. They try to have some sort of art style cooked up for it. And we did have some games where it was like, here's the cozy farming simulator. <laughs> okay. But I would say fitting 31 games, at least highlighting 31 games, again, in about 40 minutes, it's pretty good. 
the big elephant in the room, so to speak, is that Metroid Prime 4 is not here. And at this point, I think I'm content with it because I would rather Metroid Prime 4 have a presence on Nintendo's next generation platform that should be more powerful and allow Retro Studios to stretch their legs a bit more. I just think it's a better way for them to show off the next platform with something like that game. But who knows, maybe it'll appear in, uh, I don't know, a fall direct, something to wrap up the year, and it's still coming to this current platform first half of next year or something. But based on what was here in this direct, the structure of it, how it moved along, I thought it was pretty good. I'd put it above average, uh, probably a B plus, just missing that last really big announcement that I, I think would have shocked a lot of people. A 2D Mario is great, but it's uh, it's kind of like, oh, cool. A 2D Mario game, awesome. But you know what? A good Direct. I think Nintendo did really well here. But let me know what you guys think about the games announced here and the Direct itself down below. Thanks, guys, for watching, and I'll see you next time.